Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now when I did my video on password managers and if they are secure, some people mentioned in the comments that they use a particular technique. They didn't name that technique, they just said well, this is what I do. And the technique is actually called peppering. And today I want to tell you about peppering and how it can make your passwords even securer, even if you're using a password manager that's been broken into and hacked and they've stolen everything, this technique will really help. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the idea behind peppering is really, really simple. Do stay until the end because I'm going to explain to you why it's called uh, peppering. But the idea is really, really simple. Let's say you have a password uh, and it's saved either on you know the back of a napkin or it's in a password manager. Let's say it's chocolate cookie, okay? And obviously that's uh, not very secure in the sense that you've got it written down. You might be worried about it stolen from the password manager. Okay, so what you can do is that every website you go to, you type in chocolate cookie and then you add on three or four characters that only you know about up here in your head. You've not written them down. Now we're gonna say one, two, three, four, just because it's easier for the video, but you would probably use, you know, something more common like Q hash W seven or something like that, you know. But let's just say one, two, three, four. So the actual password for the site is cookie one, two, three, four, and that's what you type in. Now if you're using a password manager, something built into, let's say, your web browser or an extra service like 1Password, Bitwarden or LastPass, then it's going to fill in the chocolate cookie part and then you would just type in 1234 at the end. And the 1234 part is not known by any of the password managers and you haven't written it down on the napkin, so no one knows about it except for you. Now, obviously, you wouldn't use chocolate cookie as your password. You use a strong password with lots of numbers and lowercase letters are completely random. And then still, it would auto fill that and then you'd add your uh, little pepper at the end. One, two, three, four, obviously something more complicated. Now, there's a variation of this and that is where you take pepper out of the password. So what you mean by that is that, again, you create a secure password and you would choose a, a quite a long one, let's say a 16 character one. And then you would just delete the last four characters on the old delete key there. You would just delete them and that's the password. So again, the password that has been stored, the password that you have written down is not the actual password because you actually remove some characters from it. Now, if you are using a memorable password rather than one generated by a strong password generator, so in our case, chocolate cookie, then you'd make sure there was uh, an extra few characters on the end that you would remove. So you could have chocolate cookie one, two, three, four as the password that's saved on your napkin or in the uh, in the password manager, or it could be chocolate cookie good. And in either case, you take off the last four letters and that's what then gives you the password that works for that actual account. And there is a third variation, which is where you'd both subtract and add to your password using this pepper. So for example, if you had chocolate cookie, then you would store chocolate cookie A, B, C, D on your napkin or in the uh, password manager. When it comes up, the autofill has happened, you remove the last four, so you remove A, B, C, D and replace it with one, two, three, four. So you delete some characters and add some characters and those again are only up here in your head. They're not stored in the little book where you're writing down your passwords, they're not stored uh, in a password manager, only you know how you have to modify the password to get it into its correct form. So I said I'll explain why it's called peppering and the reason it's called peppering is because there's another method called salting. So of course salt and pepper. Now of course we need salt and pepper because everything needs salt and pepper. And salting is what happens on the server side. So if you have created an account on a website and they're storing your password, they shouldn't just store the hash of your password, they should store a hash of your password and a salt. And the salt would be some quite long string, again, strong and random. They would add that to your password, then hash it, and then store it in the database, so that then it comes even harder to crack that password by 
uh, dictionary attacks, almost impossible by brute force, depending on the exact technology they've uh, used. And that's because the password that's being stored is actually now a very, very long string of most of which is random. And they're just a little bit at the beginning or the middle or the end, wherever they're putting it, that's your password. However, you can still verify the password during authentication because by adding the same salt to the same password and applying the same hash, you'll send up with the same two hashes. They can compare them and say, yep, that's the, that's the right password this person can log in. So salt and peppering. Salt on the server side, peppering is what you do uh, on the client side. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Sims. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up and please do stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.